And it's Thursday night. Welcome to the Land Tamer Stream. We're going to be talking IGMP, actually versions 1, 2, and 3. And we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, IGMP snooping on switches. So that's kind of where I'm at right now in my studies. And this, this wallpaper today, by the way, is... Oh, I have to read it. Uh, ARP 256, Two Spiral Galaxies Merging taken by the Hubble telescope. That's pretty cool. I think I've shown this one before, but didn't really describe it too well. But uh, but yeah, so I've been going through networklessons.com. I've been taking what time I can. And I have to say, having failed the written exam twice and having gone through now a large portion of network lessons, the knowledge I have now doing doing it this way uh, compared to just kind of leveraging Boson, doing labs, um, I feel in a much better position. I know I've said that just about every day, but it is so true. Uh, NetworkLessons.com is very proficient at explaining, you know, the purpose of why things are are the way they are. For example, this discussion of IGMP versions one, two, and three, it's good to say, okay, in version two, this was this feature was added because. And in version three, well, version two, we still had this problem. And in version three, it solves it by this. So and it does in a very easy to understand way. So I really appreciate it. And I wish I probably would have done this before. But the written is a different animal from the lab. And I have to say that, you know, it, it's hindsight, right? But it has been very good at doing doing this, and I've grasped a lot better the concepts of IGMP. Much more, I've learned a lot more this way in terms of concepts versus doing the INE Advanced Technologies Labs, which I don't even know that they had IGMP labs. They may have. I don't remember. I know they have a lot of, you know, PIM labs, a lot of multicast routing labs, and some IGMP in there, but... Also, the boson gave me tidbits, but I really had not put together the concepts about IGMP like I have them now. Thank you to this networklessons.com, these, these lessons in networklessons.com. So what I've been through so far is I finished IGMP version 1, 2, and 3 snooping, and right now I'm on IGMP snooping without a router. Uh, but... These are very good, and, and I've done some labbing, too. I'm going to show you a little bit of lab as well. So version 1 and 2, you know, one thing about uh, that was confusing to me was the group-specific queries that were introduced in IGP version 2. And I thought, okay, that's really going to change the generic queries. But in reality, it doesn't a whole lot. Like, a PIM router will still send generic queries because what happened, for example, in this topology if you have a switch and router one is sending assuming you don't have igmp snooping running right but uh, we know in this case we do but if router one is sending uh, it can send group specific queries but it it still sends generic queries right because for example when it sends one it gets one um if there's another router on the segment, I'm not sure if this happens if there is a single router on the segment. We'll find out in a second, actually. So we've got one router, and we have no um, hosts are not joined to any groups. Show run interface GI01. We can see there it has an IP address. Uh, that's the switch. Basically what happens is, you know, when you're running PIM in sparse mode, it is joined to a, um, a group, 2240040. Uh, what is happening? Move. 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 It won't move. Have not really had that happen before. I'm not sure why it's happening now. There we go. Thank you. Uh, I think just the fact that router one is a member of its own group. This is not configured. Let me configure this host. 
Oh, it's zero two. That's right. Yeah, so this is not joined to any group, but if we look on router one, okay, it doesn't have any show IP. Yeah, so it itself is joined to 2240140. So I, I believe what happens even in this scenario we're going to get gen, uh, general queries, right? Now, granted, group-specific queries are important. You know, I thought, okay, the purpose of group-specific queries is that so you can eliminate the generic queries and limit the amount of traffic, you know, querying going on your network. Not necessarily so. You are still going to get general queries every 60 seconds unless you change the intervals. But what group specific queries does is it's part of the mechanism of a leave message. And let's say you're sending, for example, let's say you have a network beyond here and you're sending live video feeds to a specific multicast group address. And router one is getting it and it is sending it to these two. Uh, well, no, it's sending it to one device here, right? It's sending another group address over here. But if, you know, prior in IGMP version one, there was no leave request. We just had to wait on the timer on R1 to time out for that uh, join group. And in the meantime, it could be up to like 180 seconds, I believe. It's still going to send that video feed down here that H1 doesn't want, right? So with the leave message, we speed up that process. He sends a leave message. That triggers a group-specific query. So R1 wants to shut off the valve, but before he does, he's going to send a query. And if he doesn't get an answer, uh, he gives you like 10 seconds to answer, right? If he doesn't get an answer back in 10 seconds, a membership report, he shuts off the valve, and you're saving network traffic. So that is a big advantage of IGMPv2. But you still get the generic queries, right? And... Certainly, the networklessons.com helped me kind of understand that much better. Um, yeah, then versions 2 to version 3, I always thought that source-specific multicast was also sort of a way to, let's say you had multiple, multiple broadcasters, and you just want to have one specific source sending out to a specific group address, and... That was a misunderstanding on my part of what the design was, but NetworkLessons.com explained very clearly that really this is for security purposes, and it makes a whole lot of sense. It had a photo of a legitimate router and sort of a man in the middle, a hacker, you know, trying to overflow the network and send to a specific address. And really what you do is you prevent that you shut down a valve from a non-authorized sender using the source-specific multicast. So that's what version 3 introduced. Also, it uses a different multicast address in IPv4, or multicast v4, right? Um, IPv4 multicast, and that is 2400.22. Um, then we're moved on to not PIM snooping, but IGMP snooping, and that's where I am now. And this is kind of complicated, I have to say. But the networklessons.com made it very clear, and it had a lot of explanation, which was helpful. I read through the entire thing. I was like, okay, that makes sense. That scenario makes sense. Okay, that's very helpful. And I've never actually looked at this on a router, but I've got it um, or on a switch. But I want to run it here just a second just to kind of see... I've already seen screenshots, but it always helps me a little bit if it doesn't take too long just to lab it up real quick, which I've done in EVNG. And I'm going to join these two hosts to a multicast group, um, IP, IGMP, uh, I need to do interface, interface GI02, IP, IGMP, join group, 239.1.1. 10.1 and we are running version 2 here 
Which is zero one. I was on that interface. IP IGP join group two three nine one one one. And on our switch, we should now see. Let's actually do debug IP IGMP uh, snooping. So now I can do here uh, show IP IGMP snooping querier. So yeah, um, the switch is looking at all these multicast. Um, anything, of course, let's see, show Mac address table. Why isn't completing that? Oh, no wonder. Okay. Ugh, there's not a hyphen here. But on other devices, there is a hyphen. That, that always annoys me. I don't know about you folks. Um, anyway, show MAC address table. What I didn't realize is that you can do multicast here. I've never done multicast here. All right, undebug all. You become annoying. Too much. Stop. Thank you. Show Mac address table multicast. Maybe because we haven't actually sent multicast traffic, just IGMP. That's probably why that is. But if I were to do to send multicast traffic, we would see things here, right? But in our debugs, which are spammed us here a minute ago. So this prefix, this Ethernet prefix 01005E, we know that to be multi Ethernet multicast. So that's really what the switch is going to look for when it's snooping. It's going to actually look at the contents and detect when we have a multicast router and when we have IGMP hosts. And it's going to help prevent unnecessary flooding of... Uh, layer 2 traffic because it's going to recognize you know when hosts leave when they join and when they need to receive the multicast traffic so uh, that's the router show IP IGMP snooping select select thank you um, M router so we have one router VLAN 1 Port GI00. Um, if we do detail, as we can see here, IGMP snooping is enabled. V3 is not supported. Report suppression is enabled. Um, IGMP snooping VLAN 1, and it goes VLAN by VLAN, right? So let's show on router 1, show, show IPM route. Okay, it's not what I expected. Okay, we have these groups, maybe because we're not generating any traffic. Ping two, ping 239.1.1.1. Do I have it turned on? I must. Okay, so it knows about the groups, the interfaces, and let's see what the switch knows about them. Select, select, thank you. Show P IGMP snooping uh, groups. And there we go. So it knows like these are joined. These ports have hosts that are joined to these groups. Two through nine one one, two through nine one ten one. So really cool how that works. Um, and that is IGMP snooping. Now I'm not sure how that's going to work without a router, but that's what I you know that's what I'm going to be studying next. Then we're going to get to these, which are 
more complex. And these, I, I had a pretty good idea about these topics. These topics I've never really covered in depth at all. Um, I've read about them a little bit based on information, you know, questions I had in the boson exam. But these are going to be fun. Um, and then this, so I plan to cover these, this one tonight probably. These three tomorrow. Well, I'm kind of off tomorrow. And then we're going to go into Saturday this weekend. We're going to do these and then hopefully hit uh, WAN circuit technologies and point to point and PPP OE. Yeah. So this should be fun stuff. This is good stuff. Um, that's our map, folks. A trivia question from yesterday. Uh, can you name the BGP optional non-transitive attributes? As you know, generally, as far as the BGP attributes are concerned, um, in a BGP route, you're going to have um, well-known. Let me see if I can name them, right? Um, well-known, required. I think it's called something else. Uh, well-known. Uh, let's see. Shoot, man. I am just drawing a blank here. Like, if I saw a question, I could probably call them out. <laughs> yeah, you, you essentially have four categories. Uh, let me see if I, before I look at the answer, let me see if I can remember. So you've got, uh, well-known, mandatory, well-known, um, it's not optional. It's something else. And I'm not sure why they call it that. Okay, we have to look. Uh, discretionary. I guess they do that to distinguish optional from discretionary, but they're really the same thing, aren't they? So you have well-known mandatory. Well-known discretionary uh, then you have optional transitive optional non-transitive uh, I've always found these categories kind of curious You almost have like, uh, I guess, four columns, vertical and four columns horizontal, right? And to me, well, you know, they probably struggle to find the right words, but well-known is like, okay, who cares if it's well-known or not? Like that should be more of established or... Um, standard maybe because it's not exactly some of them aren't exactly standard um, these are like mandatory 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 discretionary you know what I mean like uh, I don't know it's always been a little confusing but this is how they are well known discretionary well known mandatory optional transitive optional non-transitive uh, anyway, the optional non-transitive are MED. Um, no, sorry. Yeah, MED. And some of these are applicable to... Okay, why is... Why is this doing that? Um, VS Code. Why are you interrupting my drawing here, my typing? I don't want you to do that. Okay, normally, like in most Microsoft products, it's called autocomplete. Here it must be called something else. Let's see if we can find it.
or control should be computed based on words of document. Yeah, I don't think we want that. This is technical writing and it hasn't, they don't have a, an extension for CCIE studies yet, apparently. Um, so you got MED. And then some of these are applicable to IBGP. Originated is, is not, but um, cluster list, cluster ID. So these are all optional, non-transitive. And I figured out that what I need to do, folks, like a month ago, I would be able to answer this easily. But I have gotten away from doing the drill sheet, like drilling, doing memory drills, because I've been so deep into uh, these protocols. I figured out what, what I need to do at least once a week is go back and do the drill sheet. Um, and this has helped me. These trivia questions have helped me recognize that all right we're going to go back to bgp for our net, uh trivia question which will be on saturday see if you can remember the bgp best path selection criteria in order um see if you can think of those in your head if you can't hit me up saturday and we'll go over those again all right well thanks so much for tuning in folks i think this is going to wrap it up again this is just a vlog not much to lab here i'm just kind of letting you know my progress going through the uh written prep i have 44 days pressures on um my pacing i'm questioning my pacing right now but i'm forging ahead hopefully we'll be on layer three technologies again next week and we'll see how that goes but if required we'll just extend it you know um anyway thanks for tuning in folks appreciate all the support i don't have any meat chunks links of the day because man i've just been free time has been mostly taking care of business and studying studying igmp <laughs> so i have not had a lot of, i have looked at twitter i have looked at instagram but i haven't nothing stood out today i got nothing but anyway thanks for tuning in folks appreciate your support uh please like us here on twitch or follow us here on twitch if you're not already you can also follow me on instagram i try to post some of instagram and twitter every day that is ccie networking related and always appreciate the support you can also follow us on youtube if you happen to miss a stream i do upload the streams to youtube generally immediately following the stream and again i appreciate all the support and keep studying sending you good bits we're going in the weekend folks and you know let's take advantage let's use what time we can for the weekend to keep on grinding you got to keep grinding every day if you can so thanks folks we shall see you on saturday i'm off friday evenings but I shall see you Saturday sometime. I'll post in the Discord back here in the Land Tamer stream. Have a good night.